SMEs in Kenya, as in I think most other countries, especially developing stage countries, have a major, major role to play. Within the context of Vision 2030, we know that SMEs provide probably nearly 80% of employment uh, in Kenya. And yet, when it comes to their contribution to GDP, it's less than 20%. Now, that needs to be changed, and it can be changed, mm -hmm. because how are we going to develop our infrastructure, our schools, our health centers, if we do not have, if we have the burden so skewed. And um, so I find that the role of S SMEs in this country will be first to provide decent jobs. And we have to work together, private and public sector, to ensure that SMEs are able to provide decent jobs for Kenyans, because that ratio of 20 to 80 percent in terms of uh, employment provision means we cannot rely on the existing formal sector. We need to encourage SMEs to formalize themselves. Now they have issues um, that prevent them from uh, formalizing and I think there's a lot of ignorance as far as that is concerned and the role, we have a role as a government and as a, even the private sector. I think this is this is both not just the public, the public sector but the, pub, the public sector together with the private sector, the formal sector economy needs to work together to encourage SMEs to formalize. Typically, they think of formalizing, meaning they're going to have to pay licenses and permits and pay taxes, and that tends to scare them away. What we need to educate them is that when they formalize and they have proper structures and they're able to engage institutions like banks more formally, the opportunities to grow are much, much higher. And so they should not focus on taxes and licenses. They should focus on the upside. When you're hidden in the shadowy part of the economy, you have no access to the formal sector that can be able to help you leverage your business. You're not able to do proper margins and acquisitions. You cannot raise money in the capital markets. You cannot actually uh, get proper credit, which helps leverage what you have. So I think this is all that, this, this is some of the things we have to do to encourage the SMEs to formalize. Um, important initiatives being undertaken by the government is the create is, is we want to pass an SME act and as we speak right now we have a bill that I think is more or less done it has been it has done the rounds through government mm -hmm. and we now it now is about ready to go to Parliament and the idea of this SME act will be to help that formalization to help SMEs also start to formally lobby for their needs and for their requirements. Today you tend to find SMEs struggling on their own, little businessmen, entrepreneurs and businesswomen struggling and getting harassed by city askaris, you know, uh, uh, in this country. And we want to say, no, let's put an end to that. Do what the big business people do. They have the Kenya Manufacturers Association. They have the Federation of Kenya Employers, and these are lobby organizations that are able to lobby collectively and with a lot of leverage for, this, for the sake of the manufacturers. There's no reason why SMEs cannot have the same kind of even much more powerful lobby, if you consider the numbers behind. So that's one. Secondly, to structure funding mechanisms, because oftentimes you find that the difference between a struggling, vulnerable SME and that SME succeeding to the next level is funding, is a funding gap. And because of the lack of collateral, the fact that they have no credit history, the fact that they're in a shadowy part of the economy, it's difficult for them to access funding. So create a fund that allows SMEs to access the kind of finances, bridging finances they need to be able to go to the next level. Um, so these are some of the things that we want to do under the SME Act. Um, and, 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 and of course have representation in all areas of the economy, in all matters whether social or economic that impact SMEs. So that's one major initiative. A second major initiative I think we're trying to talk to with the Capital Markets Authority is to say how can we encourage SMEs to formalize by listing on the stock exchange. Now we are aware that the requirements for listing I am very onerous for a struggling SME or for a young SME. To list a company, you have to have a, a certain track record of profits. You have to have given your, you know, you have to pre pre present, uh, present tax returns. And some of these requirements, and also the, the disclosure requirements sometimes are onerous and scary. So we're saying, no, we're going to have a second counter, an alternative counter for SMEs. And the initial listing requirements will be led, made less onerous to allow, to introduce them 
to the stock market, to the benefits of raising money in the stock market. And within about three years, you should be able to graduate into the, into the, into the formal, into the proper stock market. But by that time, they'll have realized what the benefits are. And they will come to know that the benefits far outweigh any perceived disadvantages of coming out of the shadows into the light, so to speak. So, a number of initiatives, of course, and of course, and of course, whether it is a tax policy, single business permit, business environment, as we try to make it much better, much faster for the big business, so it also impacts smaller business. Oh, I would like to encourage them to do that, absolutely. Um, one of the most important things about the diaspora, um, while their money is important, mm -hmm. but their experience and exposure, you cannot buy that. And uh, given that we're becoming a much more globalized world, we're getting into the age and the era of a global citizen, um, the fact of the matter is that the diaspora have exposure and experience that people who maybe have only been in the Kenya or their business life may not have. They have ideas um, that arise from the fact that they've engaged different economies, different cultures that can be able to implant into the Kenyan economy. So for that reason alone, they're very, very important. Um, and then, of course, um, uh, we are trying to proactively engage a diaspora through a couple of visits. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has a diaspora department now, completely focused on how do you engage a diaspora, both where they are and even as they come back. We say to the diaspora, you don't have to come back to Kenya. We like, would love you to come back to Kenya, but don't feel constrained to come back in order to contribute. Wherever you are, we can engage and you can contribute. The office of the Prime Minister also has a diaspora engagement office, which is working in collaboration with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Department of Diaspora Affairs, in order to now have a very proactive, deliberate policy in engaging the diaspora, both where they are and as they come into the country. The sooner and faster we're able to get SMEs organized in, into a kind of an entity that is able to lobby or advocate um, for policy that favors them, the easier it is to come up with policies that actually promote franchising. Because for franchising, you need a very strong legal environment. You need a strong protection of uh, property rights and also intellectual property rights. Uh, you need a strong, very firm patenting um, regime to protect uh, the franchising model, which, um, two things. One, uh, the new constitution that is being currently uh, uh, operationalized really introduced strong intellectual property rights for the first time in this country at the constitutional level. Now the legislation to follow, of course you have to follow it with legislation, needs to now distill the various aspects you know, of intellectual property rights, patents, franchising, and while doing that be cognizant of the fact that not all uh, we're not just doing it for the strong, big, large businesses. We also want to make sure that the more vulnerable, smaller businesses are able to have their franchise program protected until they, they grow to be big enough to be able to stand on their own two feet. I think that um, we are now uh, in a transitional era, I will say, in the entire world. And there's no corner you can hide in. You can't come to Kenya and say, oh, Kenya or Africa is a dark continent. No, it's not dark anymore when it comes to social media. I would encourage SMEs not to imagine that they are exempt from social media as SMEs and it's for the big boys. If, if, if anything, social media could be the one area where they have, can leapfrog over and above the more established, bigger businesses which are more conservative, difficult for them to turn, which have got legacy systems and procedures. As an SME, look forward. You're nimble, you've got a smaller unit, you're able, you're more flexible as an SME, and there's nothing, no better friend than, you know, the internet, uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, you name it, to be able to help you to leverage your little, your little business to the ends of the world. Today, if it's on, on Twitter is a global, uh, platform, you know, uh, so is Facebook, so is internet. You'd be surprised. You could you could touch a farmer or a buyer or a consumer in Australia or in China right from your backyard as a small business, from your little room as a so small business on the social media or the internet world in a manner that the big companies don't have an advantage over you. So I think rather than shy away or be scared of engaging in this new media, 
Understand that for everybody, there's always a beginning. For everybody, for me, it was very new just a short while ago. Twitter was very new just a short while ago. And today I'm fully engaged. So do not, it is very easy. It, look, it always looks more difficult to get in than it actually really is. There's nothing as simple as social media and there's a big advantage as an SME because you actually equalize. You level the playing field with the big with the bigger players. I just want to say Kuze Biashara for me is a terrific idea. I congratulate the genius that came came up with Kuza Biashara. It's long overdue for Kenya and for other African countries or developing world countries. Anything that is able to say to such a large part of our economy that is undercapitalized, that is um, whose potential has not been realized, anything such as Kuza Biashara comes and says, look, we want to connect the dots. We want to remove the disconnect. There's no reason why as you cannot be a big, big part of the Kenyan economy, create jobs, grow your business, and fulfill your personal ambition as an entrepreneur. Anything that does that, we will support. And to me, it looks like Kuza Biashara is doing exactly that, and I think it's a fantastic idea.